All right, guys, so we've seen the quick print profiles and we've said that we're gonna be using a standard quick print profile with the PLA from Polymaker here. So that's the Polylight PLA option that we have selected. Now that's probably what we're gonna print with, but what I wanna do is just go in and show you how you can access more advanced settings. Obviously, 3D printing is a mixture of a bunch of variables that all play into the overall quality of your print. And what we're gonna do is have a quick look at how we can get to that box very easily. So what we do is we go to the expert drop down box and select the full settings option. Now take a good look at what this says. It says it's going to copy the settings from the quick print to the full settings and it will overwrite any full setting modifications you have. So what that's doing is it's copying all the settings from the standard quick print profile. So we're using that essentially as a template. It's going to import all those settings in and now we've got four tabs that run along the top here and you can see there's quite a few options. So we're gonna go through some of the main options and why they're important. Layer height is obviously the layer height in the Z axis. So from the side on, we would see that height there. If we can have a look at those, that's the layer height there. Now the shell thickness is one millimeter, which means, take a look at that bottom layer because that's the best way to explain it. We've got the red line representing the outer shell and the green line representing the inner shell. So together, those two lines will make one millimeter. If we go ahead and change that value to 1.5 millimeters, it's gonna make that shell thicker by one more extrusion width. Remember, we're using a 0.5 millimeter nozzle, which is why it all makes up the one millimeter. So we'll set that back to zero. Now, retraction is just a way for us to manage stringing so as we're extruding plastic and we're going over parts of the print that don't need uh, plastic to be extruded for example on these fingers here what we can see is the printer will print a circle because that'll be the 2d slice and then as it goes over here there might be a little tag of plastic that that comes along with it and you see some it looks just like string like really thin string so what we do is we can turn retraction on we can enable that and if we click these three dots we actually get a couple of settings we won't go into those just yet. They're more of an expert option, but the basic idea is we can enable retraction here, which is usually enabled by default with most quick print profiles. Moving on to the next heading, we have fill. Now that is the bot bottom and top thickness, which is essentially different to the rest of the print. So the actual thickness of that bottom layer, layer one and layer 75, will actually be a combination of a few things. So. I've got that set as one millimeter. I've got my layer height set as 0.25 millimeters. We can read in between the lines there, meaning that the bottom layer is actually going to be four combined layers. It's gonna be quite a bit thicker than the rest of the layers. Now that can help with especially part adhesion to the bed. If we mouse over it, we can actually read the tooltip. So there we go. Next, we have the fill density. Now, this refers to the amount of plastic that's gonna be printed on the inside of your print. So that's our fill density there, that crosshatch shape. And what we can do is we can change that option. So if we go 50%, that means it's gonna be half filled with plastic rather than only a fifth filled at 20%. So we just wait for it to visualize what a 50% filled object would look like. And you can see it's actually quite thick. There's barely any gaps see some gaps there but not a lot alternatively we can drop that down to 10 percent, and we'll see quite a big space there what we can see actually is a lot of the times you don't need a lot of infill percentage unless you're going to be printing something that needs to be super rigid you don't need all that extra plastic on the inside it can help with the walls uh, adhering together and especially when you're going into overhangs but for the most part i'd say 15 to 20 percent is just what you need so that's great. Also at smaller layer heights, you might wanna be messing around with this setting here. The next heading we have is speed and temperature. So we've got the print speed being millimeters per second. If you read this, you can experiment with optimal settings for this one general speed, or you can go into the advanced tab. Remember we're only in basic. And in the advanced tab, you actually have different speeds for different toolpath options. So that's another thing we can take a look at. Here, obviously, these are the two of the most important settings that we'll be using, and that's the bed temperature and the printing temperature. So by default, because we're using PLA from that profile, we've already got the right settings in there. So as you can see in the tooltip, PLA 60 degrees is recommended, and that's what we've got. 
Next, we have support. So these are some basic support options. We can do it touching the build plate, meaning anything overhanging the build plate, it will print supports from the build plate up to help that out. Alternatively, we can do everywhere, which means it will actually print supports from parts of the model up to help it out. The idea of supports is that you remove them at the end of the print regardless, so be aware of that. And those three dots, again, take us into the expert config with a ton of options for supports. Likely with platform adhesion, we can do brim, we can do raft, or we can do none. And if we select none and click those three dots, we can actually turn those skirts off. This is a quick way of doing what we we're talking about before. I don't recommend to turn skirts off. It's good to purge your print head at the start of every print. But if you ever wanted to just maximize that print area a bit, that's where you'd do it. Finally, we've got the diameter of our filament, which is usually gonna be 2.85 millimeters or we can swap that around and print with 1.75 millimeter filament. You can do it, but for the general rule of thumb, we'll probably leave that at 2.85 millimeters and the flow percentage. Now this is another value that we can experiment with. So this is essentially a multiplier for the amount of material that we're extruding. So if we find that the bottom layer of our print has some gaps in it, we might want to increase the flow percentage, increase the amount of plastic that we're extruding per movement, and that will just help to fill in some of those gaps that make the print look a bit less than average. Alternatively, we can go into the advanced menu, and these are a bit more heavy on the settings options. Now we've got some, some different options here, not really worth going into the very specifics of it. If you did want to have a look at them, just read the tooltip and get a bit of an idea about it. We're going to go into these later on when we're troubleshooting some options, but for right now, it's probably not worth it. Just do take notice of this though, the uh, cooling, cooling fan option. That's a big one. And you can actually set at what height you want your fans to turn on, what speed they'll start off at, what speed that they'll max out at, and the minimum speed of the uh, print head to have the fan on. So that's a a pretty important option. Finally, in this video, we're gonna look at the plugins and the start and NG code, which are these two here. So the plugins, we can just add plugins into our Cura installation that help us with things. For example, we can pause at a particular Z height or we can tweak at a particular Z height, i.e. we can change the layer height or a property of our print that we've just looked at at a particular Z height. Great for changing filaments out at certain times or potentially changing the quality of prints at certain points. And finally, the start and NG code. Now we talked about this in our G code video, but this is an actual representation of what this G code is for. And you can see there, this G code has been generated specifically for a Lulzbot Mini. So essentially we could read through this alongside the start process of our printer and see it going through these exact processes. All right, so that's pretty much the advanced settings of Cura in a nutshell. We'll go over some more advanced things in the future. I hope that has really cleared up the idea of your printer software and your slicer. Let's take a look at saving and preparing for our print.